This is a story of how this got us this house. So here you go. Let me put this down for a minute. It's very heavy. It's made out of, it's got a steel case. So uh, Carol and I have been married for a long time. Uh, so a few years after we were married, we were living in a, an apartment. And this is after our first daughter was born. And I was working at a new place over there. Uh, it was the first really full-time computer job that I'd had that wasn't sales. We had some equipment that we used. Uh, the job was to run the data center and do a little programming and administer the systems and everything for uh, engineering systems. And these workstations uh, had you know, a big screen for the graphics and they had a control box that had some lights on it and they had a smaller uh, box that was called the message monitor uh, where it would tell, you know, what was going on. If you were looking up for the size of something, the size of it would read there. Uh, it wasn't graphical, that was just text. The company I was working uh, for uh, that really gave me my first break, they weren't able to get these boxes, the control boxes anymore. That's what I just showed you is actually uh, what I ended up building to replace them because they couldn't get them. Their supplier dried up. And so being who I am, I told the owner, I said, you know, I think I can make these. I'm sure I can make them. Uh, and I will do it for you for less money than you're paying now. I'll, I'll, it'll be 20% less and I can make these. So he said, well, that would be great. And I said, I'll do it on my spare time. Uh, and, you know, I'll charge you that much. Uh, the only thing is, is that I need a deposit. I'm just going to need some money to get me started so I can buy the equipment I need and, and parts and everything start to develop it. So at the time, we had no computer at home. This is before PCs and all that kind of stuff. So I went out and took the money, bought a little uh, very minimal computer that I could use for helping to develop this uh, that would let me test it and stuff like that. I bought a really cheap uh, ICO oscilloscope uh, for like 20 bucks at a garage sale and got some parts together and some other stuff and, you know, breadboard and other things and just started to figure out how to do this. Oh, anyway, my point was, is that this would be enough to get pay the down payment on a house. Uh, we were just starting to make enough. We thought we could swing the payment, but we needed it down. Started working on it. First thing I did was just see whether or not I could push a button and have it reliably pick up the signal. But let me back up a little bit. If you've seen my some of my career videos, you know that I had an interesting time uh, in school and, and I went to a technical high school. And in the third year, uh, even though I was studying the mechanical stuff like uh, lathes and mills, uh, cutting metal, uh, inspection, using micrometers, all that kind of fun stuff, you know, they had a cross training with electronics. It was not expected that I would do well at that, but I did really well at it uh, because I was motivated. I was motivated because they offered a second course afterward for the top five people in the electronics class. And I wanted to be in that, so I aced the class. It was probably one of the best classes I ever had in, in my three years of high school, which is, you'll, you can see about that in the career video too. This is just kind of a special extra thing. Uh, so anyway, I had a digital logic class, and so I knew how to work with some basic stuff with chips, and I was sure I could build this, but I had a lot of learning to do. Uh, at the time, I'd never built a circuit board. I'd never uh, really designed a fully functional device all the way through that was fairly complicated. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to see if I could do that, the button push. So I got a button, and I, and I did some circuits, and there's more to that than it sounds like. So I worked that out. Uh, then I looked at some other similar devices. I looked at their circuit uh, diagrams just to see if there was anything I could pick up. And I figured out that they, some of them worked differently. Uh, and so I kind of made a decision of what I wanted to do there. Now I could have put a computer in it, you know, a little chip, but I didn't do that because I had never really built anything uh, like this using a, a small computer chip. And I didn't trust myself to get it. So what I did was brute force. It's just pure logic chips. There's no CPU in it. There's no brain, which means you can't make it do anything else. 
Now, if I were doing this today, I'd put an Arduino in there, I'd put a Raspberry Pi or something uh, and do it. But if I was doing this today, I might have made it with a, a touch screen and then I wouldn't have had buttons at all and that would have been even better. But we didn't have that kind of thing back then. It wasn't a possibility. Uh, if I had done it with a CPU, I would have had to do a lot of programming and burning chips and stuff that, you know, I just didn't feel confident. So anyway, I did this thing. Uh, I learned that some of the time, uh, if you had a keyboard, there wasn't one pin, you know, that was getting turned on for each key. It was doing a scan. And the scan kind of looks like this. You know, it's like there's some number this way and there's some number this way. And it runs through them all to see if any are pushed. And so I had to learn how to, I had to figure that out. I did some drawings and stuff and some diagrams to figure it. A lot of trial and error on this. It took me a long time. It took me two and a half years to get this whole thing done to the point that we had enough money for the down payment, that we had sold enough of them. I had hoped that somebody else would buy them than, than this one guy, but that never worked out. But he bought 12, and I'll tell you more about that later. So I uh, went through, figured it all out. Then I had to go through and do circuit boards, and I'd never done circuit boards. We didn't cover that when I, in my class that I took in high school which was like 10 years before this, I took my old drafting board that was still laying around from 10 years earlier, uh, put some pins on it that are needed when you're doing circuit boards that have more than one layer. You actually, what you do is you tape up. Now, nowadays they do this stuff all electronically, but back in the day, and I had to go ask questions. I got books from the library. I bought a book. There was no buying books online. I had to go down to a bookstore uh, and to a technical bookstore, if I remember right. Uh, to get it all worked out. Uh, I also went to a place that made circuit boards and told them what I wanted to do and asked them, you know, what they would expect from me. And so they told me what they expected uh, and that there was more to it. I was going to have to get a photography uh, company that would develop the reduced film and all that stuff. I'll show you that in a little bit. To do this, what I did was I sketched out the circuits with red and black pencil with a pencil. Black for one side, red for the other side. And then took that and had some clear sheets on this drafting board. Uh, and then used black tape. Now there's tape that was specially made for this that stuck well and it was all one length. It wasn't anything fancy. But I had to tape it up. It's, it's called a tape up. I had to tape up the circuit. And then I bought little decals that were like little donuts and you put those on, and that's for the places in the board where there's pins and where uh, it's going to get soldered. And there were special ones for chips, uh, so that when you use those, it would just lay the whole chip down all as one thing. You didn't have to lay down each pad of the chip. Uh, let's see. So I did that, put it all on there, and then I, for the other side, I would use another sheet. But these pins at the top, uh, would make it so that all sheets would line up nicely. And then there was some other guide stuff that uh, has to go on there to show where the limits of the board are so that when the people are making the board that they know how to line it up. But what you'll notice is it's big. And that's because we make this at four times the size. It makes it a lot easier when you're dealing with small things. So then after I got this all done, I took the sheets to a, a photographer uh, to a development studio. I forgot now what they called it. There was a name for it. Uh, but they took that, they took a picture of it, and then reduced it down to a quarter of the size, and that brought it down to the real size. Then I gave that to the circuit board place. And we had to work out some stuff. Oh yeah, I had to draw a thing that showed where all the chip locations were, you know, like the little uh, lines that show, you know, U13 for chip number 13, that kind of thing. Uh, and put the name of the company, my company, uh, name on there, which was Arcad Systems. Uh, did all that. Gave it to the board company. They gave me boxes of boards. So how about the money? So I took $2,000 up front. But as I got into it and then found out, how, did the research and found out how much it was going to cost to build the boards, I went back to him and he knew me. I mean, I'd been working with him for a while. He trusted me. And I said, you know, I'm sorry, John, I'm going to need another $2,000 because getting these boards done is really expensive. Now, I wasn't charging him more than I told him I'd charge him, just asking for an advance on it. So I ended up taking $4,000 ahead. And that was in about 1985. So that was a lot of money back then. 
Uh, but he trusted me, gave me the money, uh, went through, uh, paid for the boards. I can tell you the boards were about $1,200 to get all the boards made. And I made extras because I thought I was going to be able to sell 20 of these at least. And then I figured I could always get more made. But it doesn't really pay to get one or two done. One or two is still going to cost me $1,200. I might as well just get it, you know, as many as I can get for $1,200, whatever the minimum was I could pay. Uh, so got the boards back. Then I had to design, and I had already started designing the sheet metal case that would hold it. And I made that out of 16 gauge steel. I found a place that would do sheet metal work. Uh, I actually drew the design up on a CAD system, on a computer-aided design system, so everything would be really perfect. Uh, I, in school, had taken drafting and all that, so that was easy for me. Uh, but designed it all up, had little posts sticking up where the circuit boards would go onto it. Uh, it was pretty nice. I was pretty happy with it. And when I got it back, that was another, I don't know, I think that was like $2,000 or something for that. When I got all the cases back, uh, then, the big thing was, will the circuit boards fit onto the pins on the cases correctly? And they did. Everything was absolutely perfect. So then I sat down at the coffee table. I did this whole thing on the coffee table in our apartment for a long time. Uh, and soldered the, the sockets in, solder, soldered the components in, just assembled it all up, and then powered it up and went to see what would happen. I don't remember if it worked right away. I think it may have, but if it didn't, I had to find out what was wrong and fix it. Uh, there's a thing called ECOs. Uh, it's engineering change orders. And I didn't have to do a formal one because I'm just doing this myself. But on that, if I found a problem, instead of, I couldn't afford to go and buy new circuit boards. So what I would do is I had built the circuit boards with, extra, with places for extra circuitry that didn't go anywhere so that I could add additional chips if I had to. And there were a couple of cases where I had to actually scratch out part of the trace and then put wires onto the two parts and then take them over someplace else uh, to a new piece of circuitry uh, because I was having a problem that when you pushed a button, it was repeating. If I pushed a button and it was supposed to produce an A, it would do AA or AAAAA. Uh, that's called bounce, keyboard bounce, and I had to find a solution for that. Uh, but that's where I ran into a problem. I got it to be better, uh, but I just couldn't get it right. And the oscilloscope I had wasn't fast enough to really be helpful. I mean, it was a, at the time, it was a 20, 30 year old scope uh, and very slow. I think it was 20 megahertz or 5 megahertz. Uh, so I couldn't really see anything that was a problem. So I had to go and borrow, because I didn't want to go back and ask him for more money. I went out actually and borrowed. $2,000 uh, from family, which from my in-laws that you really don't want to borrow from your in-laws, but I did. Uh, and I went and did a whole pitch, you know, and said, I'm really close. It'll get us a house. I'll pay you back, you know, probably within two months. I, I just need to finish this last engineering problem. So I went out, bought the scope. Uh, it was a hundred megahertz, four channel scope. It was a beautiful, beautiful scope. I still have it although it isn't working right now, and I'm hoping to fix it soon. Uh, put the scope on there, and as soon as I put the scope on and hit a button, I could see the problem. And it was a thing called ringing, and from the scope's point of view, it's essentially that um, you see the, the signal go up or down. Well, what happened was it would go, you'd push the button and it would go boom, and then it would go doing, 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 doing. It was just like a ringing bell. That's why it's called uh, you know, ringing. Uh, and so what you have to do is put some circuits on there that dampen it. It's just a damping circuit and it just brings it down so it stops doing that. It absorbs the energy when it's up and it releases energy from it's down so it helps it to come off a little sharper. There's a couple of different ways to do that uh, and I did put some other circuitry in too but that last little bit of ringing I actually had to put uh, a pull up and a pull down resistor and a little capacitor on there and that, that took care of it. So now they worked. And so I went to uh, my boss, who was also my client, uh, and said, okay, here it is. I put it into his design studio. People started using it. I designed it to be a little lower profile, that that was easier on people's hands before they kind of had to hover. But this one, they were able to be in a more natural position. Uh, the buttons were 
uh, low travel buttons. They didn't move down as far, so there was less fatigue for the operator. I used LEDs instead of the original light bulbs so that they would last longer. Uh, so, you know, that worked out nicely. I still have a box of the buttons that I didn't end up using. I can't throw them away. I just still hold on to them. Uh, so I just started making them like crazy. And eventually uh, he agreed to buy 12. Uh, that gave us $24,000. So I took a $4,000 advance, you know, which counted toward it. And that was great. So the first two, I didn't get any cash for it. But then he took the other two right away, and so I was able to pay off my in-laws. And then the rest of it, at that point, I'd bought all the parts. We had also, uh, we had put in a lot of our own money. We were just scrimping. I mean, back then, we couldn't even afford to eat, you know, out at a fast food restaurant. Carol made food all the time at home. Uh, but we went ahead and just every penny we could, we poured into this. Uh, so by the end of the thing, we'd actually put in, uh, let's see, how much was I making at the time? I was probably making maybe 30 a year, 30,000 a year. And we were able to save a few thousand every year and then put it into the project. So in the end, uh, 24 of them, uh, selling 12 of them made $24,000. We cleared about $7,500 cash, which is just about what we needed for the down payment. Uh, so we took that money and that was our down payment. And that's how we got the down payment on our house. Uh, I mean, we've moved since then, but, you know, I didn't want to say down payment on our first house. It sounds like, then it sounds like we have 10 houses or something. You know, we only have one house, uh, but that's how we got started. It's a lot easier to go once you get your first one, uh, especially because they go up in value. But anyway, if you have any questions about it, uh, let me know if you have any comments on if this gave you an idea or, you know, just any comments on it. It's, it was an adventure. Uh, I sometimes have more guts than good sense. And uh, it could have gone very, very badly. If, if I had not been able to make it work uh, after the first part, I would have owed my boss $4,000. And if I, after I borrowed the money from my in-laws, I would have owed $6,000, which was for us a huge amount of money uh, at the time. I, it would have taken us years to pay it back. But I'm very, very grateful that it worked out. And that's, that's the story. So hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.